Today's episode of Reading Bug Adventures is sponsored by Sourcebooks and their new picture book biography, The Girl Who Heard the Music, How One Pianist and 85,000 Bottles and Cans Brought New Hope to an Island, by Mahani Teev. Pick up your copy of this amazing story at thereadingbug.com, bookshop.org, or your local independent bookstore. Sourcebooks, changing lives, book by book. Hi, reader. It's time for another great episode of Reading Bug Adventures, written, performed, and produced by The Reading Bug, our family-owned independent bookstore. We have loved meeting so many of you in person so far this summer. It's been incredible to hear all about your road trips and other adventures, and we've loved your ideas for new adventures for us, too. If you can't make it in person to our bookstore, don't worry. You can shop from millions of books and titles and gifts online for kids and grown-ups at our bookstore website, thereadingbug.com. There you'll find recommendations from our staff on curated lists on our homepage. You can create wish lists for friends and relatives to shop from, and you can even put together personalized care packages for a super easy gift option where me and my booksellers choose books and gifts from our bookstore based on your needs. If you want a perfectly personalized gift online, shop for book subscriptions at readingbugbox.com. Unlike other subscription boxes, Reading Bug Boxes include a selection of books that are handpicked by me or other expert staff members and personalized to the unique age, interests, and reading level of each reader. As the reader's skill and interests change, so do the books we pick. Whichever you choose, readingbugbox.com or thereadingbug.com, we thank you for your support. We need you to keep our podcast and local independent bookstore running. Isn't it great that you can support small business from far away? Thank you also to our sponsors and patrons. You're part of what makes Reading Bug Adventures possible. To become a patron and support our work, please visit patreon.com slash readingbugadventures. Okay, reader, are you ready for another adventure with me and the Reading Bug? Great! Then let's fly! It's time for a Reading Bug Adventure! It's a Reading Bug Adventure There's lots of fun in store Just inside our book bag There's new places to explore Grab your crayons and paper And your imaginations too The Reading Bug and I can't wait To share our trip with you Hi, reader. It's so great to see you again. I hope you're ready for an exciting new adventure today. I know I am. I don't know where we'll be going, but I'm sure it will be a whole lot of fun. It always is, isn't it? Every time we meet, the reading bug brings her magic book bag along, filled with her favorite books. And when we hop inside, we're transported to whatever time or place is in the book she's been reading. Where do you think we'll be going today? You know, I'm getting a little worried. The reading bug isn't here yet, and I haven't seen or heard from her all day. You haven't seen her, have you, reader? No? Well, while we wait, I brought a few things in my backpack to play with. I brought paper and crayons to draw with, of course, a frisbee we could throw, and a game of jacks. While we wait for the reading bug, do you want to... Lauren, reader, I'm here, I'm here. Sorry I'm late, but I just couldn't tear myself away from the book that I was reading. And then, of course, I had to put on my costume. Like it? We are just so relieved that you made it, aren't we, reader? But, uh, I don't know how to tell you this, reading bug. I think you're wearing your bedsheet, not a costume. In your rush, did you grab the wrong thing to wear? Look, reader, the reading bug is wearing a plain white sheet wrapped around her little bug body. If it covered your head, bug, you'd look like a ghost on Halloween. I'm not trying to look like a ghost, Lauren. And this is not a bedsheet. I'm wearing a chiton. In case you want to guess where we're going today, that's a hint. The people who live where we're headed all wear chitons. Chiton? I've never heard that word before. Have you, reader? So, your clue doesn't help me one bit. Can you give us another clue, maybe? Why don't I tell you the titles of some of the books in my book bag? That should give you all the clues you need. Great idea, reading bug. Reader, let's see if we can guess where we'll be going today based on the books in the reading bug's book bag. Let's see here. Some of the books in my book bag today are How to Train a T-Rex and Win a Gold Medal by Michael Phelps, And She's Got This by Laurie Hernandez. Stop right there, reading bug. Those two books have something really neat in common. Do you know what it is? They were both written by Olympic gold medalists. That's right, Lauren. Michael Phelps is a swimmer who won 28 medals in the Summer Olympics more than any other Olympic athlete. 23 of his medals were gold medals. And Laurie Hernandez was a member of the 2016 U.S. women's gymnastic team that also won a gold medal in the Summer Olympics that year. She was also the first Latina to make it to the U.S. women's gymnastic team in 30 years. Bug, 
Please tell me that we are going to the 2016 Summer Olympics to watch these two superstar athletes compete. A trip to the 2016 Summer Olympics would be a great adventure, Lauren, but that's not where we're headed today. Why don't I tell you the names of some of the other books in my magic book bag? I've got Zeus the Mighty, The Quest for the Golden Fleece by Crispin Boyer, Pegasus by Mariana Mayer, and The Gods and Goddesses of Olympus by Aliki. Well, I know that Zeus was a Greek god, right, reader? And he lived on Mount Olympus in ancient Greece, along with the other Greek gods and goddesses, didn't he? But what does Zeus have in common with Michael Phelps and Laurie Hernandez? Can you think of anything, reader? You've nearly got it. Remember, the Greek gods live on Mount... Olympus! Right! And Michael Phelps and Laurie Hernandez are athletes who won gold medals in the... Olympics! (gasps) Oh, Olympus! Olympics! Right! I've got it now! The first Olympic Games were held in ancient Greece, weren't they, Bug? Yes, yes, yes! The first Olympics took place almost 2,700 years ago, in Greece, and they started as a festival to honor the Greek god Zeus. They were named the Olympics, because that's where Zeus and the other gods and goddesses lived. So, then reading, Bug, are we to visit the gods and goddesses of ancient Greece today? Yes, yes, yes! I'm wearing a chiton because that's what people who lived in ancient Greece wore. I've been reading all about Greek gods and goddesses, and I decided that we shouldn't myth out on the adventure to ancient Greece. (laughs) Amazing! Where will we be going? What will we do? That's the hardest part, Lauren. There's so much to see and do in ancient Greece that it's hard to decide. Did you know that the Greeks wrote some of the world's best plays? That's right. So we could see a Greek tragedy together today. We could. But ancient Greeks also invented the world's first pizza. It's called plakis, and it's a combination of herbs, onion, and garlic on top of flatbread. Yum. We could eat an ancient Greek pizza together. Yes, and they also invented geography, wind power, and geometry. Geometry? Eh, I vote for pizza. The Greek physician Hippocrates was the founder of modern medicine, and a Greek philosopher named Socrates taught people how to live their best lives. Wow! So much to do! So much to see! The ancient Greeks also built beautiful buildings, like the Parthenon. The Parthenon was a Greek temple that was built over 2,000 years ago to honor Athena, the goddess of wisdom and war. It's considered to be one of the greatest buildings ever built. I've heard about the Parthenon. It was a marble temple built by the ancient Greeks that had 46 upright pillars called Doric columns all around the outside of the building. I read that the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. was designed to look like a Greek temple, but it only has 36 columns. Can we visit the Parthenon today, Bug? I wish we had time, Lauren, but I don't think we're going to be able to. At least, not today. Because today, I really want to meet some of the Greek gods and goddesses. I read in Usborne, Greek myths for young children, that ancient Greeks were polytheists. That means that they believed in many gods, not just one. And the Greek gods and goddesses lived all around them in the fields and woods, the ocean, and under the ground. Their gods were huge, beautiful, and had superpowers, just like the superheroes we read about today. Wouldn't it be cool to meet some of them? I heard that Greek gods and goddesses were kind and helpful to people that they liked, but they could be mean and spiteful if they didn't like you. That's true. A lot of Greek myths are scary, like the story about the box that Zeus gave to Pandora. He gave her a box? Yes! Zeus warned Pandora not to open the box, but she was so curious that she opened it anyway. And when she did, all sorts of horrible things flooded out. Hate, jealousy, cruelty, anger, hunger, poverty, pain, and sickness. Oh, if we meet him, I don't think I'm going to be accepting any gifts from Zeus today. There are some scary stories. But remember, Lauren, myths aren't facts. They're just stories about gods and goddesses, heroes and monsters that people made up to help explain natural events or to support their religious beliefs or social customs. And, just like fables... Myths often have a moral. Do you remember the story of Icarus that we learned about in our airplane adventure? Sort of. Once upon a time, a king named Minos locked Icarus and his father, Daedalus, in a tower that was so tall that there was no way to escape. Daedalus decided to make wings so that he and Icarus could fly out. When Daedalus strapped on Icarus's wings, he warned Icarus that if he flew too low, the spray from the sea would wet the feathers, and if he flew too high, the sun would melt the wax on his wings. But Icarus forgot his father's warnings as he flew higher and higher up into the sky until the heat from the sun melted the wax on his wings and Icarus fell into the ocean and drowned. Right. Now I remember. And the moral of that story is not to become overconfident or prideful, right? Right. I don't know, Bug. 
Even if Greek myths aren't true, they are still pretty scary. I'm not sure I want to visit a place with so many scary stories. What do you think, reader? Come on, we can't miss out on this amazing adventure, Lauren. Okay, okay. We'll just have to remember to listen to any warnings that we receive along the way. But before we go, we should make sure that our bodies are stretched out and ready for the adventure that awaits us. Let's all stretch out together. Go ahead and stand up, unless you're buckled into your car seat, or tucked into your bed, of course. And wiggle your fingers and toes. Are you wiggling? Great! Now, stretch your arms up high over your head. Perfect. Stretch up high, touch the sky, crouch down low and wiggle your toes. Swing your arms from side to side, let's get ready to go. Stretch up high, touch the sky, crouch down low and wiggle your toes. Swing your arms from side to side, now we're ready to go. I feel much better now, don't you? One last thing before we leave, though. Reader, did you remember to bring some crayons and paper with you? On our adventures, we get to be illustrators and draw pictures of all the amazing things we see and do. That way, we can capture the best parts of the story to show our friends and family when we're done. Pictures are how we'll retell our adventure once we've returned. I don't think they had crayons 2,700 years ago. So if you didn't bring them with you, you should probably go get them now. If you want to pause our adventure, the reading bug and I will wait right here for you. Okay, Reading Bug, are you ready to start this incredible adventure? I sure am, Lauren. Here we go. Magic Book Bag, we are ready to fly, to visit the gods and goddesses of the days gone by. Take us to where they live on Mount Olympus in Greece, so we can join them in their revelries. Reader, look, the Reading Bug is opening up her book bag. It's growing bigger and bigger, big enough to fit us all inside. And look, inside the book bag, there are pictures, lights, and words swirling all around. All from the books that the reading bug brought with her on our adventure. What do you see, reader? I can see tall mountains and deep valleys, and soil that's dry and rocky. I see olive groves and grapevines dotting the hills, too. I see a giant mountain rising high into the sky. (gasps) Mount Olympus! And on the mountain is a magnificent building with a giant room with twelve different thrones. Do you see it? The largest throne has an emblem of an eagle clutching jagged thunderbolts. I see women with long braided hair pulled up on their heads, gold earrings, silver bracelets, and seashell necklaces. And I see men with short hair and long beards, wearing tunics like the reading bugs that are shorter than the tunics that the women are wearing. Oh, and I also see some strange words floating by. Words like Pegasus, Gorgon, Sisyphean, Stadion, Pentacolon, Icor, and Griffin. I wonder what all those strange words mean. It's time to get going, but before we do, let's learn how to count to three in Greek to give the book bag an extra magical boost. Repeat after me. Enna. Enna. Theo. Theo. Tria. Tria. Great job. Now count with me and let's dumb to the book bag together. Ready? Enna. Enna. Theo. Tria. Tria. Jump! Let's jump inside our book bag. What will we find there? Imaginations run away. What's in our book bag? Our trusty book bag. What will we learn about today? Wow, reader, look what's happening. We're going up, up, up into the air, high above the earth, and we're traveling backwards in time, too. Just look at my watch. It's counting backwards. Everything below us is disappearing. Our houses, schools, parks, and gardens are gone, and we're traveling over a large body of water. It must be the Atlantic Ocean, on our way through time and space to ancient Greece. We're quickly flying toward a peninsula that's jutting out into another large body of water. The Mediterranean Ocean, I think, which is where Greece is located. That's right, Lauren. That must be Greece up ahead, because it is surrounded by many islands of various sizes. I read that Greece has 227 islands. We're getting closer and closer to the ground. I wonder where we'll land. Hold on tight, everybody. We've landed. It's very quiet outside the book bag. All I can hear are a few bird songs. Let's crawl out of the book bag and see where we are. Look at this place. It's amazing. 
We're at the bottom of the gigantic mountain that we saw floating around in the book bag. Mount Olympus! It's so tall that I can't even see the top, and it's also very, very steep and rocky. It sure is. Reading Bug, I don't think there's any way that we'll be able to climb it. Have we come all this way just to turn around and go home without meeting any Greek gods and goddesses you've been reading about? I'm afraid this trip has turned into a misadventure, reader. Yeah, it seems like this is going to be more than a misadventure than a misadventure. I had no idea Mount Olympus would be so... big! Sorry, I guess we'll need to head back home and rethink this one. If only you had wings like me, we could fly to the top of Mount Olympus together. Reading bug. Wait. I may have spoken too soon. Look up! Up? Why? <laughs> Whoa! Lauren! Is that a... a flying horse? It looks like a magnificent, beautiful white horse with huge, outstretched, feathered wings. So, yeah, I think it is a flying horse. But flying horses aren't real, are they? Some people might tell you that talking bugs aren't real either, Lauren. But unless my eyes are lying to me, I'm looking at a beautiful white horse wearing a golden bridle and flying right towards us, carried on the air by its enormous white feathered wings. You were just wishing we had wings like you to carry us to the top of Mount Olympus, weren't you, Bug? Maybe this horse and its brilliant wings are our ticket to the magical, mythical adventure today. You know, I did read about a flying horse named Pegasus in Us for in Greek Myths for Young Children. Lauren, if that horse can fly, maybe it can talk, too. Now that it's landed, why don't we give it a try? Sure. But what do you say to a flying horse, a uh, pegasus? Oh, hey, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> Reading bug. Would you mind giving us some pegasistance? <laughs> Stop that. I don't mean to stir up any trouble, but we need to hoof it to the top of this mountain. <laughs> Never mind. I'll do it myself. Uh, hello? I don't know if you can understand me, but my name is Lauren. And this is the reading bug and our reader friend. We've traveled here to the foot of Mount Olympus from a faraway place in the future in order to visit gods and goddesses that live here. But the mountain is so tall and so steep that there isn't any way we could climb to the top. I'm not sure he understands. Ah, I'm just horsing around. Of course I understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a relief. Good day to all of you, Lauren, reading bug, reader... Time-traveling creatures are as magical and mythical as flying horses, and that must be what makes it possible for us to talk to each other. Perhaps all magical creatures speak a common language. My name is Pegasus, and yes, you are standing at the bottom of our home, Mount Olympus. Our home? You mean, you live here? With the gods? Wait, are you a god? Oh, sort of. I am a demigod. Lauren, reader, we know all about demigods, don't we? And I read about demigods in The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. The children of a god and a mortal are demigods. That's right. And a demigod can also be the child of a god and a monster, like me. A monster? Sure. My father is Poseidon, the god of the sea, and my mother is Medusa, one of three Gorgon sisters who have living poisonous snakes growing out of their heads instead of hair. Your mom has snakes for hair? Oh, that's not the worst part. All three Gorgon sisters also have the ability to turn anyone who looks at them into stone. Into stone? Reading bug, remind me not to look at any Gorgons today. Pegasus... Is your mother nearby? No, no, she does not live on Mount Olympus. Oh, phew. Have you always lived here, Pegasus? No, I used to live in the sea with my father, Poseidon. In fact, I once helped Dad slay a sea monster called the Kraken so that we could rescue Andromeda, a beautiful princess who later became my father's wife and the queen of the sea. After that, my father's big brother, Zeus, invited me to Mount Olympus, and I have lived here off and on, between adventures, ever since. Your whole life sounds like an adventure. Hey, I have a good idea. Why don't I fly you up to the top of Mount Olympus? I've done that once before. Oh my goodness, thank you! We were going to ask, but we didn't want to be any trouble. We would love to ride with you while you fly us to the top of the mountain. Uh, Lauren, 
You might want to reconsider hitching a ride up the mountain on Pegasus. I just remembered one of the Greek stories I read. The first mortal that Pegasus tried to take to the top of Mount Olympus was the prince named Bellerophon. Riding on Pegasus's back, Bellerophon was able to slay a Greek monster called a Chimera, who has the head of a lion, the body of a goat, and a snake for a tail. After that, Bellerophon became very conceited. Understandably. I'd feel pretty good about myself, too, if I was able to slay a terrifying monster like that. I don't see why we need to worry. Well, after defeating the Chimera, Bellerophon decided he was godlike and should therefore live with the gods. So he convinced me to fly him to the top of Mount Olympus. We had almost reached the top when Zeus sent a horsefly to sting me under my tail right on my bottom. What a surprise that was, and boy, did it hurt. I reared up in the air for just a second, and poor Bellerophon slipped off my back, and I wasn't able to catch him before he hit the ground. Did Bellerophon survive the fall? Yes, but he was wounded, and I still feel really bad about it. And he spent the rest of his life alone and unhappy because no one wanted to be friends with a man who had made Zeus so angry. So... Zeus got angry that Bellerophon tried to get to the top of Mount Olympus, and we're... Well, Zeus doesn't really think that mortals should be allowed on Mount Olympus, but I'm sure that this time will be different. Zeus probably won't use his powers to try and stop us. Use his powers? What kind of powers does Zeus have? Oh, man, what kind of powers doesn't Zeus have? Zeus is the king of Mount Olympus, where he rules over both gods and humans. His most famous power is the ability to throw thunderbolts that can level mountains, vaporize islands, burn entire cities, and even boil the seas. He can also control the weather, causing rain, huge storms, dangerous lightning showers, and big gusts of wind. He governs the functioning of day and night, controls the effects of time, and decides how long mortals live. That's... A lot. Zeus can also transform himself into all kinds of creatures, including an eagle, a satyr, a phoenix, a bull, an ant, a swan, a star, a bear, a shepherd, a goose, a serpent, and a vulture. Yikes! Reader, it sounds like a trip to Mount Olympus could be crazy dangerous, doesn't it? Maybe we should just stay down here and meet a few more gods and goddesses when they venture off the mountain, like Pegasus did. That seems a much safer choice. Oh, I doubt you'll meet anyone at all if you stay here at the bottom of Mount Olympus. Most of the gods and goddesses rarely leave Mount Olympus. After all, why would they? The air on top of Mount Olympus is filled with golden light and warmth. And each of the 12 major gods and goddesses have their own palace on the mountain. Each one is made entirely of gold or marble or other amazing things. That sounds incredible. Lauren, reader, we have to see it. Oh, it is incredible, Bug. The gods and goddesses all meet daily at Zeus's palace where they have feasts and drink nectar and ambrosia. When they drink ambrosia, the blood in their veins is replaced by ichor, a substance that makes them immortal. Immortal means they live forever. That's right. So why would they ever want to leave, right? You definitely won't be able to see them if you hang out down here all day. You heard Pegasus, Lauren. It won't be much of an adventure today if we don't take a chance and fly up to the top of Mount Olympus on his back. What do you think, reader? Should we hop on Pegasus's back and fly up the mountain with him, despite the danger? I'm really worried that Zeus may try to stop us, and with powers like Zeus's, we'd be no match. On the other hand, if we can make it to the top of Mount Olympus, we should have a pretty incredible adventure. Come on, hop on. I'm sure we'll make it to the top this time. At least I'm pretty sure. There's always some danger on our adventures, but we didn't come all this way just to turn around and go back home, did we? You're right, Bug. Okay, Pegasus. I sure hope your failed attempt to fly Bellerophon to the top of Mount Olympus taught you how to keep us all safe this time. I think so, Lauren. Think so? That doesn't sound very promising. This time, I'll definitely be on the lookout for horseflies and other dangers. No matter what Zeus may try, I won't be surprised. And I promise I won't rear up in the air and drop you. Hop on my back and we can start our flight right now. Come on, hop on. Okay. Reader, follow me. Make yourselves comfortable. It's going to take a while to get you to the top. 
Make sure your seats and tray tables are in the upright and locked positions, and please look around and locate the exits nearest you, which are basically everywhere. <laughs> now, I'd like to invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy your flight. Here we go! Up and away into the sunny blue skies! Pegasus, you have such a beautiful, broad back. There's plenty of room for us back here. And you're doing such a wonderful job flying! It's such a smooth and peaceful flight. Thank you. Isn't flying fun? Flying is my second favorite thing to do. After reading, of course. <laughs> it is fun, and the view up here is stunning. We're surrounded by fresh, warm air, blue skies, and beautiful light clouds. The sun is shining brightly and glistening off the silver rocks of Mount Olympus. It's so relaxing. I think I could take a nap. Go ahead, Lauren. I'll let you know when we get there. Well, maybe not a nap, but I do think we could all use a rest, don't you, reader? While Pegasus flies us to the top of Mount Olympus, it seems like a good time to pause our adventure. In just a couple of minutes, I'll play some music for us to color to so we can draw illustrations of our adventure so far. I'm going to draw a picture of us flying through the beautiful sunny skies on Pegasus's broad back. Good idea, Bug. Reader, what will you draw? Whatever illustrations you create, I'm sure they will be incredible. When you're a reader, you're a leader. You're ready to learn about everything as you grow. You'll show this world that you can be anything. You could write a book or fly a plane, build a house with a giant crane. Whatever you do, one thing will be true. There's nothing you can't do. You can see it through just by being you. If you want to read more about Greece, the Olympics, or the Greek gods and goddesses that live on Mount Olympus while you wait for part two of our adventure, be sure to check out the books in the Reading Bugs book bag at thereadingbug.com slash adventures. Thank you so much for joining us on our Greek adventure. The Reading Bug and I can't wait to see you next time. It's a Reading Bug adventure. There's lots of fun in store. Just inside our book bag, there's new places to explore. Grab your crayons and paper and your imaginations too. The reading bug and I can't wait to share our trip with you. Hi, reader. I want to tell you all about this special book I'm reading. I'm into biographies lately, and this new picture book is called The Girl Who Heard the Music. How one pianist and 85,000 bottles and cans brought new hope to an island. It is so great! It brings together three of my favorite subjects, music, Polynesian culture, and sustainability. When one woman recycled 24 tons of ocean trash to create the very first school of music on Easter Island, she proved that anyone can make a difference. Do you remember the book Shark Lady? Fans of that book will certainly appreciate this incredible feminist story that empowers kids to use their passion to change the world. Find out more by purchasing The Girl Who Heard the Music by Mahani Teev at thereadingbug.com, bookshop.org, or your local independent bookstore. Sourcebooks, changing lives, book by book. Thanks to Sourcebooks for their ongoing support. And thanks to all of our individual sponsors. If you are interested in becoming a patron, please visit our page at patreon.com. Thank you for listening to Reading Bug Adventures. I'm Lauren Savage, and today's adventure was an original story written by Diane and Brandon Savage. This episode was performed by me, Chloe Savage, Brandon Savage, Dan Shern, and Shannon Shern. Sound mixing and mastery is by Resonate Recordings. The Reading Bug is our family-owned independent bookstore in California, and we're passionate about educating, entertaining, and engaging children of all ages. Learn more about us at thereadingbug.com and our personalized subscription service at readingbugbox.com. Thank you.
Thank you.